back to my channel so today I'm excited to be putting you guys on game with achieving a skin like foundation base and also to tell you a thing or two about my favorites and affordable drugstore products so if you're here for any of those two reasons then you are definitely at the right place this video today is going to be so much fun so definitely sit still hang tight and enjoy the video so if you guys must know one thing about me I cannot talk and do my makeup at the same time I don't know what it is but it just doesn't work for me so I'll basically just be sitting here and walking you guys through the process of what I did earlier so that that way you'll be filled with all the detailed information that you'll need to achieve your very own flawless makeup routine if you are a returning subscriber then you guys already know this by now I've done it a couple times if you aren't subscribed babes I don't know if I should be blaming you for always watching and not subscribing or maybe I should blame the YouTube algorithm for this being your first time seeing me. Um, I hope you like this video and I hope it gets you to subscribe. I'm not going to force you to do anything. If you like it, you'll subscribe. If you don't, what can I do, you know? So I asked you guys in the community section what you would like to be seeing first and you guys decided to go for a drugstore makeup routine. Originally, I wanted this entire routine to be under $10 but... Baby, with this economy and with the way things are set up, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to spend a little bit more. All of these things are less than $15, so it's not like completely on the other side of the spectrum with the prestige product, but you have to sacrifice a few extra bucks to get the look that you really want. And maybe sometimes you don't have to and you just practiced enough to the point where you're able to get a $2 product to work like a $15, $30 product. But for me, I take pride in some of the products that I use, okay? So everything here is affordable affordable meaning you're not spending fifty dollars for foundation but anyways enough cha 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 babes let's get you hooked on this makeup routine shiver, shiver, shiver. Oh. so we're starting with a fresh face but as you guys can see my pretty pretty face is a little little dry she needs a little bit of moisturization so let's start off with some moisturizer the moisturizer that I'm using today is the elf moisturizer I used this first in November and ever since I've actually been reaching for it a good number of times to know that I actually really like this product I think this product was maybe about eight dollars I'm gonna have all the cost of each product on the screen so that you guys are fully aware of how much that you'll be spending it's not like a heavily oily moisturizer it's a nice cream hydrating moisturizer so I really like it I basically just applied that all over my face but one thing that I do is I make sure that I'm not putting too much moisturizer on my nose if any at all because my nose tends to get really oily so I try to make sure that I'm putting the least amount of product possible on my nose so yeah my face is not moisturized she's looking moisturized <laughs> So let's go ahead and move into the next step, which for me is priming. So the primer that I reach for today is this Makeup Obsession Game Set Mattifying Primer. I really like this primer. It reminds me of like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It's also a silicone primer. I would compare the two together. They basically do the same thing for me. I mean, but I use this primer again. I put it all over my face and I did try to avoid my nose as much as possible. Silicone primers are probably not my favorite things to use. If you've used a silicone primer before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about but I haven't really found a drugstore primer that I'm really obsessed with if I were to reach for a primer in general I'll probably reach for one that is like really tacky so that I can make sure that my makeup is sitting on top of it and sitting correctly and not moving at all as far as silicone primers it's a little bit of give and take you know it's not too shabby but is it the best I don't really know the next step that I get into today are my eyebrows. So originally, I already planned that I was not going to be going into great detail on what I'll be doing to my eyebrows today. I know that it's very unlike me. I like to always pack you guys with as much details as possible so that you can leave the video, you know, belle et fou. You can leave the video satisfied with enough information. But I'd rather put all of these crucial details in a very detailed eyebrow tutorial that I will be bringing out for you guys maybe in about a month or so. So yeah, we're not going to go into great details with the eyebrows today, but of course, course I will show you what I'm using because you know let's be fair here okay so what I use for my eyebrows is what I always use I use like a one dollar brow product from the beauty supply I never really go for anything too fancy too expensive they're all gonna do the same thing and then on top of that I already have a very full set of eyebrows so I don't really have to do too much with like product usage and things like that and then I do like to conceal with the revolutions concealer in c13 this is like my go-to concealer for underneath my eyebrows and then on top of my eyebrows 
I just go in with foundation like I always do. So yeah, again, detailed eyebrow tutorial is going to be coming out for you ladies and gents, I promise. The next thing that I did was actually something really exciting that I wanted to do again since my last, not my last video, but one of my previous videos, which was this TikTok video where I did a lipstick hack or it was like a blush hack using lipstick. And I told myself I'm not going to be using lipstick every single time, okay? Let's be honest, I'm just not gonna do it. So I did get these NYX blush creams and I decided to put these on my cheeks underneath my foundation. These are the NYX Sweet Cheeks in Showgirl and Coralicious. But I decided to go for both of these because it kind of complements what I would use on a regular day for blush anyways. But I really do like the combination of these two. And then I decided to just kind of like buff it out into my face using this Real Techniques sculpting brush. And I just used this to literally just blend out that blush. And again, if you watch my TikTok video, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I was in love. I was in love with the outcome of this blush hack. And I know it's not really a hack, like a lot of people do do it. But to me, it was a hack. I liked it. I really liked it. So I decided to do it. And as you guys can see, it's so clutch. I barely put any blush on top and you can still see that blush. Again, check out the TikTok hack video because um, the views could be better. Okay. Right on top of that blush, I'm going to go ahead and put my foundation on. And today I decided to go with the Maybelline Full Coverage Super Stay Foundation. This is a new pickup for me. I really don't know what prompted me to get it. I was just in Ulta and I was like, oh, new foundation, why not try it? But I do want to put you guys on some alternatives for foundations. I always, always, always like to go in with the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop Foundation in Deep Cool. This is like my go-to foundation and it's only $14. And then I also do like the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation in D70. This foundation is really good. Sometimes I mix the two together, but I did want to try out this Maybelline one as well because drugstore foundations have really been, they've been killing it, y'all. Being that I had the blush already on my cheeks, I decided to concentrate that foundation underneath right here where my jaw is and I just blended it out on the lower part of my face and whatever excess I had on the brush, I just decided to tap that over my cheeks and then I blended out whatever I had on my forehead and this made for a perfect way to kind of cover up that blush but not cover it up all the way. We still want it to show, like it's there for a reason. And after my foundation was on, everything was looking good and beautiful. Also, let me just tell you guys what brush I use. I'm pretty sure it's like one of the Instapop face brushes. I typically go for this brush when I'm blending out my foundation. It's like dense enough for foundation, but it's not too dense where it's sucking up all of the foundation. Once my foundation is on, the next thing that I did decide to do was contour. The blush already kind of brings definition to the face, but I wanted to bring some more definition to my face so I added some cream contour it's actually a foundation it is this black opal foundation stick in ebony brown I added some contour right below my blush on my forehead and in this step as well I also do go ahead and add some contour right into my nose to create that nose contour that I like and I blend out the outer parts of my face first and I'm going to blend out that nose contour in the inner parts of my face a little bit later once my concealer is on so another thing that I do want to mention make sure that when you're blending out your face you turn your head to the side a little bit and you're looking Looking at yourself into the mirror from the side that way you're able to see exactly what needs to be blended out right here there was a period of time when I did not do this and either my contour was too harsh or my blush was too much there was just a lot of like harshness going on and because I would always just look directly at myself into the mirror without looking to the side and making sure everything's blended out I would look like a totally different person on the side than I was on the front for concealer my favorite concealer that happens to be on the lower spectrum of prices is this Juvia's Place concealer in the shade number nine. And I really like this concealer because it's so pigmented and I promise you a little bit goes a long way. It's going to be really good for when you want that really full coverage underneath your eye and you just don't wanna to have to put on too much product for that. So all I do is just add some of that concealer right underneath my eye right here. And I keep that there for a little bit of time. When I'm blending out that concealer, I like to keep that concealer in the same place for as long as possible, make sure that I'm concentrating that in there once you realize that it's kind of blended out in that little corner then you can take whatever excess and kind of turn your sponge a little bit so that you're working on the part that has no product and you're blending everything out with this step most of the concentration as you can see stays right where you had it and everything else kind of just like gradually evens out to the outer parts of your face I just prefer it because that way I'm not having so much product out here as you can see that is blended out and with the blush hack that we did you can just 
tell that blush is kind of like coming from within you. It's giving exactly what it needs to give. So with me being a full coverage babe, especially underneath my eyes, you can still see my bags underneath here. So I do add a little bit more concealer just right in that same place that I added it earlier. And while I'm letting this second layer get tacky, the next thing that I like to do is just go ahead and blend out my nose contour. And I like to blend it out with this e.l.f. blending brush. I just take this and I just buff everything out and I'm keeping the brush as straight as possible and just kind of blending out everything. Once I'm done using the brush, I just go ahead and use my Real Techniques blending sponge again and I'm buffing out that product so that it kind of balances itself out on my nose. And by now that concealer is ready for us to blend out and I'm keeping it literally just concentrated right in the center. The second layer, I don't even take it out all the way out because I've already done that with the first layer and I'm okay with the amount that is already on the outer parts of my face. So I just keep everything right in that same spot. and then we are ready to set our face with setting powder. For the setting powders today, I'm going to be using two of my new faves. So first I like to take the darker shade, which is deep, and I like to concentrate that underneath my eyes, right where I put the concealer. So what I like to do, thank you, Laura, from Miss Jackie Ina, cause baby, she put us on, okay? What I like to do is use her setting powder trick, and I like to take that product on my Real Techniques blending sponge, put a little bit on the inner part of my arm. And I'm just going to use whatever is left on this sponge. So I like to go layer by layer using small amounts at a time it doesn't make it so cakey I feel like when I take a bunch of translucent setting powder and I just like dunk it all on my face it looks so cakey it doesn't look seamless it just looks like yeah when you take a picture you're gonna get flashback you know what I mean but I like to go small by small small by small and make sure that everything just looks correct you know what I mean so yeah once Miss Deep has done its job girl it's time for me to go in with medium deep which is just a little bit lighter and I'm just concentrating her right on this inner part and I'm not dragging that out all the way out. You don't want to do too much with these powders but they are perfect for giving you like that even like under eye look. My next step once my face is set because some of this translucent setting powder did kind of wash out my blush a little bit I'm just gonna go in and kind of just awaken that blush a little bit more by adding this CoverGirl True Blend blush and this blush was probably four to like six dollars. It wasn't anything too expensive and it's so pigmented so a little bit of this this goes such a long way as you can see in the video I'm not even doing too much and I'm like very lightly tapping it and I did use this elf airbrush blender sponge this brush is kind of like tilted a little bit so it kind of sits on my cheeks perfectly and if I use just the right amount of tapping because it is a dense brush so whatever is on here is going to come directly onto your face but if you know you're light-handed and like you can work your hands and do a little bit of flick of the wrist and just make sure that you're not putting too much then this brush is actually actually perfect and I just kind of went in with my real technique sponge and I tapped all of that in so that everything is just kind of smooth and really blended out my next step was mascara I could have held off on this a little bit but I decided to do it anyways so I do use this mascara this is the Maybelline lash sensational mascara I've been using this for a couple of years now and this mascara is actually really good for a drugstore mascara so definitely check out this mascara and this was again like eight dollars the next step in my routine was to kind of set my face for the first time and when I do like this multi-layered setting spray the first time I always like to go in with the morphe setting spray or like a dewy kind of setting spray so that I'm still able to like blend stuff on top of it and it's not like too mattifying so the first setting spray that I decided to use was this morphe continuous setting mist so yeah I just kind of use this to kind of melt everything together and I will use another setting spray as you guys will see a little bit later but that is what I did for now this product is $16 and surprisingly it is the most expensive product that I've shown you guys throughout this entire video and I'm pretty sure you can get a setting spray that is a lot cheaper and does about the same thing once that product has kind of like dried up just a little bit I do like to go in with my makeup sponge again and just kind of like dab everything in so the next step in my makeup which is actually a new step that I just started doing recently is going on top of my face with a face powder and I picked up this L'Oreal infallible foundation powder this is in the shade 375 which is also deep amber and all I did was go in with a powder brush and just lightly very lightly because this this stuff is
is very, very pigmented. I just lightly go in over my face with this brush and kind of add as little as possible and kind of like build your way up. But all I did was focus it mainly on the lower parts of my face and then whatever excess I had on the brush, I just kind of placed it over my blush. And I don't take it into this area right here because I do still want that pigment to be there. With an eyeshadow brush and this same product, I just add a little bit of that to kind of bronze up my eyes a little bit. And I'm just blending that all into my eyes. And I also do kind of use that product and kind of drag it down into my nose contour a little bit. So like I said, this is something that I started doing a lot recently. It just kind of like evens out everything on my face and I really, really like it. The next step in my routine is kind of like almost my favorite step, which is lips. I did start with lining my lips with this Ruby Kisses Style Pencil Liner. And I'm focusing most of that lip liner on my top lip. So once I have created the shape that I want for my lips, then I like to go in with this Juvia's Place Lipstick in Toffee. This is from their Nude Lipsticks lineup. It really pigmented and it's kind of like the perfect brown for me to use on my lips. So I just kind of concentrate that on my bottom lip. And then my next step was to use this NYX Lingerie Gloss. Because I kind of like my lips to look a certain way, I found that using a brush with blending out my lip gloss has been a lot more beneficial than like rubbing my lips together. I don't like a lot of gloss to be on my top lips. So I just kind of like blend out whatever is on the bottom. And then I add just a little bit on the very top, the inner part of my top lip. So yeah, that's what I like to do. And it gives me like that perfect pouty lip look that I really like to go for. After kind of like adding a few touch-ups to the rest of my face, which is like kind of fixing up my eyebrows if it needs fixing. I'll kind of like add a bit more mascara. I'll kind of like blend out my face a little bit if it needs a bit more blending out. My next step after that is to basically just set my whole face. So let me tell you guys about this new pickup. It is this Makeup Revolution setting spray. It is the Super Fix Super Hold Misting Spray in Ultra Matte Finish. You guys can't even tell that I did my makeup over two hours ago. My makeup still looks very matte. I would probably compare this setting mist to the Urban Decay all nighter ultra matte setting spray that was basically it you guys and all i had to do was put on lashes and once my lashes were on my face looked kissable everything just came together it gave it exactly what it needed to give oh my god that is so rude of me i totally forgot that i did use highlighter and i got this makeup revolution highlighter in just my type and i just added a bit of highlighter right on the tip of my nose i added it right here on the bridge of my nose and i did for the first time in a very long time highlight my my cheeks who is she? This highlighter was just looking so good. I couldn't resist putting it on my cheeks. And I used the Morphe M509 brush. It's a very fluffy brush. So it's perfect for me to just kind of sweep my highlighter right on my cheeks. It adds just the right amount to show that there is a glow from within look. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around with me. I hope that I was able to give you guys a tip or two. You were able to pick up on something new today. Maybe pick up on a new product that you're going to go ahead and add to your car. I would not have put you guys on these products if I did not like them. So I was very particular about which products I showed you guys today. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe down below, join the family. And with all of that being said, the journey to 50k subscribers continues and I will definitely see you guys in my next video.